We all know the value of reading aloud to our students, but Doug Merck, a secondary ELA teacher in Inglewood, California, has asked a really important question. He said he's frustrated. He's frustrated because his kids, when he's reading aloud remotely and virtually, aren't paying attention. And he wants to know how to keep them engaged. And so let me give you a half a dozen ideas here of, of things to consider, okay? Because we know we want to read aloud, but we need the kids to view it, watch it, participate in it. So my first suggestion would be, hey, whenever possible, make sure kids have a copy, a hard copy, or a visual digital copy of the text you're reading aloud. Because just listening and staring at a screen can be boring. And so this idea of them being able to follow along, a lot of kids like us are visual learners and they need to see the text. A second option uh, or strategy to try would be this idea of being edutaining. So when you're reading aloud, don't be seated in front of your desktop webcam. Stand up, get close to the camera, move around. Hey, what if you added a little onomatopoeia with your voices or even music in the background when appropriate for whatever it is you're reading? All of these things can start to add a little bit of the engagement value for kids. Okay, here's a third one. And that would be read aloud the most intriguing parts. In the print article that goes with this, I'm going to uh, hyperlink to uh, a previous blog post we've done on this idea of reading some of the novel, skimming some of the novel, novel and slimming some of the novel. Well, Let's make sure we're reading the most intriguing parts, the parts they want to pay attention to. And so that might also kind of pare down or prioritize the excerpts that you're going to share with kids. OK, when students are viewing uh, independently, let's say you pre-record some of your read alouds which I advocate for. I think there are absolutely times you could pre-record yourself delivering the real out and kids are logging in to view it. And you're going to be edutaining, getting close, using music, moving it around, right? And you're going to use the most exciting parts and give them a, a hard copy when possible. But something else to consider is you could pre-record yourself reading aloud and then drop it into something like Ed Puzzle, which allows you to then uh, break up your own video read aloud and insert small little comprehension questions. So the kids can't just play through the video. They have to listen and get the content so that when the question pops up, they can answer it. That's the only way to keep that read aloud video progressing forward. Okay, let me give you another thought. And that is that I would be intentional about when the read aloud is live and it's a virtual meeting versus when the read aloud is a pre-recorded something that kids can view on their own independently and at home. If if it's just a read aloud where you just want them to absorb it and that's it, then do it independently. D don't do it live. Save your live read alouds for when you want interaction, when you want to send them to breakout rooms, when you want them to respond to certain things in the chat. This idea adds a, a social interaction to the read aloud. And so now it's not just a kid logs on, but they all log on because they're, they're wanting the social and to hear what their friends are thinking or saying. Now, with that last piece, let me add one more idea, and that is that regardless of when you want the kids to view a pre-recorded read aloud uh, or participate in a live a virtual meeting where you're reading aloud, always, always up the engagement level by giving them a reading purpose. Give them something to read for, to be thinking about. If we just say, okay, as I'm reading aloud, make notes, what stands out, what's important? Okay, well, they're thinking nothing. And so this idea of, I want half the class reading for, why would the author do such and such? And I want the other half of the class reading for, how did the author do such and such? Or maybe think this perspective for this character or this character's perspective. You could even assign them different color highlighters, digital highlighters or legit literal highlighters. If it's a debatable 
kind of texts that we're reading. All the more, have them reading for certain perspectives or points of view. Have them reading for certain types of evidence. If you give them a before reading purpose, you pose those really hard, thought provocative and inferential questions before they read, then they have a reason to be engaged while you're reading. 